The first video is intended very much to be an introduction to Adobe Encore for the uninitiated, which goes right through the whole process of producing a DVD from the point of adding chapter markers in Premiere right to the point at which we can burn a disc. It's intended to give you an overall understanding of the Encore authoring process. In it, I touch upon encoding settings, menus and menu buttons, timeline navigation, user settings, and the basics of the overall authoring process. I also introduce the extensive flowcharting facility, which I think is one of the real gems in Adobe Encore. In the second video, I'll be showing you how you can use the chapter index facility to minimize the effort you need to make when you are faced with having to provide multiple menus to access all of the chapter points in a timeline. I'll be introducing submenus, menu button types, and the use of the button auto activate facility. In video three, I'll be delving into the slightly heavier subject of the PSD layer structure used to create Encore menus and how we can edit the colors used in the button highlights and how we can produce our own buttons using Encore and go about refining them if we need to by using Adobe Photoshop. In video four, I will be introducing how you can use replacement layers and create your own menu files and menu templates so that you can reuse the stuff you produce more easily in the future by adding it to your Encore library. The next video, video 5, is a detailed look at the way we can navigate through the chapters and timelines on a DVD to provide multiple ways of looking at the contents to suit the various needs of the audience. I'll be looking more closely at end actions and overrides and introducing the use of playlists and chapter playlists. We then move on in the next video, video 6, to looking at how we can add subtitles and audio tracks to a DVD. We will look at how we can add the subtitles directly to a timeline and how we can add them by importing offline produced script files. I'll cover the way we can change the colour sets used and the restrictions that are imposed by the DVD specifications. And we'll also look at how we can add multiple audio tracks. In the slideshow video, I go through the process of adding still photos to your production and how you can add an audio background and effects and even subtitles to make your slideshow a bit more interesting than the average stuff you tend to see in DVD slideshows. I've added the last two videos as I know from the queries I get via YouTube that the subjects they cover are of interest to quite a few people. In the Hiding Buttons and Easter Egg video, I'm going to look in some detail at the way the physical button routing via the remote control works and show how we can hide buttons and timelines to tantalise, or dare I say, even annoy the audience. And finally, in the last video, I'm going to look at how we can go about jazzing up our menus a bit by using animated flying buttons and button transitions to make them appear a bit less dull than the average DVD menu screen.